As most of you are aware, the new Thor movie just came out. Thor 4, if you will. And it got me thinking about the first Thor movie. This movie was made back when the MCU was still in its infancy, and wasn't the Hollywood juggernaut that it is today. And a lot of people don't really look too kindly on these earlier movies. When compared to all the crazy, bombastic movies we see in the more current MCU, these movies seem quainter in nature. However, I have to say, after watching this movie, it's actually better than I remember. Sure, it has its issues, but I really admired it. From the grandiose operatic aesthetic of Asgard to the insane costumes. But what really got me was how character driven this movie was. This sort of character development went over my head as a kid, but now, as an older, maybe a bit wiser man, I can really appreciate it. Kenneth Branagh directed this movie, and that was a surprisingly fitting choice. He's well known for his Shakespeare adaptations, and that works heavily in this movie's favor. It's basically a modern superhero a version of a Shakespeare play, taking inspiration from stories like Othello and King Lear to really shape the two main characters in this movie, Thor and Loki. These two undergo character arcs that are so interesting when you analyze them. There's something quite poetic in their arcs, almost reflective. That's right, we're doing another reflective arcs video, baby. <laughs> I'll be discussing how Thor goes through the positive change arc and Loki goes through the negative change arc. So the movie begins with Odin telling his two sons, Thor and Loki, the tale of how he defeated the Frost Giants and brought peace to the Nine Realms. Loki asks about the Frost Giants the way a frightened child would ask their parents about the monster under their bed, while Thor says he wants to fight them the way Odin did. Both characters run to their father, who tells them that they're both destined to be kings. In this scene, we are shown Thor and Loki's want to be king and to be just like their father, or at least the version of him that he tells in the story. Essentially, both characters want to be Worthy. This is the theme of the whole movie. What does it mean to be worthy? We are also shown their lies. While Thor's lie is that mightiness and worthiness are the same thing, Loki's lie is that he is lesser than his brother and that he must be better than him to achieve greatness. Setting up Loki's envy towards Thor. The movie then cuts to a few hundred years down the line, where Thor is about to ascend to the throne. He is about to achieve his want, and he doesn't care who knows it. You can see how he walks down the hall in such a cocky manner, while Loki stands to the side, watching. However, the ceremony is interrupted when Frost Giants inexplicably sneak into Asgard and break into the vault. They're easily dealt with, but Thor demands that they march into Jotunheim and teach the Frost Giants a lesson. His lie is fueling this need to prove himself the way his father did in the story. But Odin tells him not to do that, as it's not what a true king would do. Which of course enrages Thor, who feels he's being underappreciated for wanting to do what his father did many years ago. And who goes to comfort him? Loki. When together, Loki appeals to Thor's want to prove himself worthy by saying that he agrees with him and that the Jotuns are a threat. Now, while it's unknown to the audience at this point, Loki is later revealed to be the one who let the Frost Giants into Asgard. He says he only did it as a bit of fun, as a way to stop Thor from becoming king, which would have given him an opportunity to prove himself as worthy to Odin. Just like Thor, Loki is following his want to be like his father, and his lie that he has to be better than his brother, fueled by his envy of Thor who is clearly shown to be the more favoured son. Loki puts up a false protest to Thor's plan to go to Jotunheim, but subtly egging him on to do it. They go to Jotunheim and Thor says more than a few words. But this battle is cut short when Odin appears. Instead of the valiant fight to the death that Thor was hoping for, Odin scolds his sons and takes them back to Asgard. Thor argues further, feeling as if he should be receiving praise for his actions. His lie is convincing him that he's completely in the right and that his father is the fool. As a result, Odin banishes him to Earth to live as a mortal. His lie has met reality for the first time and was proven wrong. While on Earth, Thor acts rude, entitled, and unwilling to accept the circumstances he's in. He attacks the doctors treating him at the hospital and doesn't show any gratitude towards Jane Foster and her friends who have taken him in. He's still believing this lie that he's mighty and therefore better than these people, making it okay for him to look down on them. Wait a minute, is that guy wearing a Christmas jumper? Does this movie take place during Christmas? Moving on. Meanwhile, on Asgard, Loki is going through an identity crisis. While in Jotunheim, he noticed something that's now making him question a few things. This brings him to confront Odin about it and to find out a shocking truth. 
that he's not the birth son of Odin and Frigga, but the son of Laufey, the Frost Giant King. He is one of the monsters that he has heard stories of and has feared since he was a child. This revelation feeds even more into his envy of Thor, whom he always thought was favoured above him, and now he feels he needs to prove himself even more as Thor's better, and now he does have that opportunity. Odin abruptly falls into the Odin sleep, allowing Loki to prove himself as king and a better choice than his brother, going so far as to refuse Thor's friend's request to end his banishment. He dresses this excuse up as an honourable act, but truly he just wants Thor out of the way and to not steal his glory. Back on Earth, Thor discovers that his hammer Mjolnir is also on Earth and so he chooses to go to the crash site, along with Jane, whom he promises he will get all of her equipment that was stolen by S.H.I.E.L.D., and who are now at the crash site. His lie is leading him to believe that everything will be fixed once he's reunited with Mjolnir. After fighting a bunch of heavily trained guards like it's absolutely nothing, and showing how mighty he is over these mortals, he believes that this will prove that he is worthy, and that his father was wrong about him. However... Thor tries to pick up Mjolnir, but it doesn't move an inch. Thor's lie has met reality for the second time, and is now crushed. While he was told earlier in the movie that he was unworthy, it's this scene that truly cements that fact into his mind. Loki then shows up to see Thor. He tells Thor that Odin is dead, and it's because of Thor's actions. This scene here truly marks the turning point for both characters. While it's a lie, Thor finally understands the consequences of his rash and violent actions and how they affect the ones he cares for. He's now beginning to adopt empathy, while for Loki, he has chosen to let his lie consume him. He's lied to Thor in order to break his spirit and phrases his new role as king as a burden. This is something straight out of the Shakespeare playbook, like Richard III acting reluctant to take the throne of England while secretly craving it. In his eyes, Thor has been taken out of the equation completely, and now he can truly prove that he is better than him. After this, Thor goes to a bar with Selvig and finally begins to ponder on why he was sent to Earth in the first place. He's finally accepting that he has much more to learn and understands that mightiness doesn't equate to worthiness, and now he must discover what does. He begins by teaching Jane everything he knows about the Nine Realms and Earth's place in it. He's now treating her as an actual person rather than a lesser being, and in turn, they start opening up to him. Selvig, who didn't trust Thor at the beginning, begins to bond with him and they become bros. Look, he's even making breakfast for them. It's so nice. And then worlds collide as Thor's friends from Asgard find him on Earth. They beg for Thor to come back, but he won't. He understands that he has to face the consequences of his actions. Our boy's done a lot of growing up in two days. But then Sif tells him that Odin is still alive, and Thor realizes he's been tricked. Loki sends the Destroyer to stop Thor from returning to Asgard. Instead of trying to join the fight with his old friends and prove himself mighty, he stays out of the way, out of fear that he would slow them down, working with Jane, Selvig, and Darcy to evacuate the town. But when he sees that Sif and the Warriors Three are no match for the Destroyer, he goes for the sacrifice play. <laughs> He offers his life to Loki in exchange for the safety of his friends. No. He now truly understands why he fights, not to prove himself the best, but for the protection of those who can't fight for themselves. And in that moment, Thor is now worthy. Mjolnir shoots from the crash site straight into Thor's hand, restoring him back to his former glory. He has shed his lie and has now proved it through his bravery and compassion rather than his mightiness and hubris. While this is going on, Loki's plans begin to unfold. He brings Laufey into Asgard so that he may have his revenge on Odin. Laufey stands over Odin's defenseless body, ready to deliver the final blow when he's stopped by... Loki? Okay, I know a lot of people got confused by this scene, and I will admit, I was confused when I first saw it too. But when you see it through the lens of Loki wanting to prove himself worthy, this is actually genius. While at first it seems like Loki is rejecting his adopted family for his biological one, you know, blood's thicker than water and all that, it's revealed that he's deceiving them in order to justify the destruction of Jotunheim. Loki has always seen the Frost Giants as monsters. We even see that in his first scene as a little boy. So to find out that he himself is one of those monsters has broken him. He feels the need to double down on his efforts to prove himself worthy to Odin. Him killing Laufey 
his biological father, and his desire to destroy the rest of Jotunheim symbolizes how he's completely rejected that side of himself. He believes the only way to prove that he is not a monster is by destroying all the other monsters. Loki's lie that he must be better than Thor in order to be loved has taken hold and has led him to where Thor was at the beginning of the movie, believing he has to slay the monsters. Loki then weaponizes the Bifrost to destroy Jotunheim, but Thor tries to talk him out of it, surprising Loki, who believed Thor wanted them dead as much as he does now. But Thor's newfound sense of empathy and compassion compels him to defend the very people he originally sought to destroy. The two brothers clash, and Thor ends are victorious. However, he's unable to turn off the bridge, and so, to show how far he's come, he destroys it. Sacrificing his chance to see Jane again, whom he has come to love. He's putting the needs of others above his own the complete opposite of how he was in the beginning of the movie, and how Loki is now. So the Bifrost is now destroyed, Thor and Loki are about to fall off the edge of Asgard, but are saved by Odin. Loki looks up to his father and says, I could have done it, father! I could have done it! For you! For all of us! But Odin simply replies, No, Loki. Loki's lie has led him down a path to be loved and accepted by his father, but he has ended up losing both, without even realizing he had them all along. In his grief, Loki lets go and plunges into the vastness of space, supposedly dying. Don't worry, we know he's not. The movie ends with Thor looking out to the stars and asking Heimdall about Jane, and we see how Thor has inspired her to continue her research, showing how he's made a positive change for her through his actions and his words. Thor is no longer the man that we found him as at the beginning of the movie. He has now changed completely for the better. His disrespect towards his father is now gone, and he now praises him, vowing to be a king just like him, only now through empathy rather than strength. Thor 1 doesn't really get the love it deserves. Yeah, it does have its problems. The whole movie takes place over such a short span of time that it feels kind of strange how the characters change so much. If the movie had taken place over a week or a month, then it might have made more sense. And also Thor's romance with Jane might have worked a lot better and not seeming like love at first sight. But to be honest, this really doesn't undermine how well done this story is or how beautifully it's made. This is a movie that's looked down on these days, but is honestly a far better movie than it's given credit for. There's a reason and these two are so loved even today, and that's because this movie gave both of them a strong foundation, the story of how two brothers struggle with what it means to be worthy, with one learning it by shedding his entitlement through humility and sacrifice, and the other developing his entitlement through envy and greed. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Thor's road to worthiness was paved with hardship, but yours won't be if you simply like and subscribe to this channel. Also, in case any of you noticed, I've been doing a bit of rebranding, and this channel is now called Cinema Stuff. Well, I've created a new channel called Combabs Films, where I've put all my short movies. So if you want to check that out, feel free. Link's in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day.